Welcome to the Cathedral Archives of Mdina. Today I'm going to speak to you about a particular collection we have here in this archive, and that is the various judicial cases, books and miscellaneous volumes that are part of the archive of the Inquisition. The Inquisition in Malta is an interesting subject, especially because of its impact on 17th and 18th century society here in Malta. Our archive is very detailed and sheds a lot of light on the impact the Inquisition had on Maltese society. Before approaching this archive, one must understand what was the Inquisition and how it affected our history. The Inquisition must be seen as a result of the internal reform within the Catholic Church after the Council of Trent, which followed the upheaval of Protestantism in Europe. Following this Council of Trent, inquisitors were sent to various countries and dioceses all over Europe. In Malta, our first inquisitor was Pietro Dusina, who came here in 1575. The Inquisition in Malta lasted for around 237 years and ended in 1798. The Inquisition in Malta could be seen as a third authority here on the island, when one also considers that of the Grand Master and the Bishop. The Inquisition on the island was meant to eradicate spiritual ignorance, as well as focus on the sacramentalization of daily life, and this was helping the society to follow the teachings of the Church without falling into superstition, which would lead them to sin. The Inquisition in Malta had its own tribunal and palace. The Inquisitor would reside in the palace in Birgu, which also had its tribunal hall and prison and kitchens too. Many persons would come in contact with the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor also made sure to have a whole web of informers and patentees. Many individuals came in contact with the Inquisitor. The Tribunal of the Inquisition is of particular importance to us. For this brought in contact with the Inquisitor various Maltese, foreigners, clerics, knights and slaves who, for some reason or other, were brought in front of the Inquisitor to be questioned or tried for various religious crimes or spiritual and moral issues. It is interesting to note the judicial process of each case. The majority of cases deal with individuals who go on their own account to the Inquisitor to accuse themselves of their own sins who sometimes wouldn't have been given absolution from the parish priests because the issue was of interest to the Inquisitor. Each case gives us various details about the individuals as well as the political and social scenarios that they were in. They bring various situations that would have occurred in the Maltese cities and villages Within the hall of the Tribunal of the Inquisition, one would encounter the Inquisitor, the Chancellor, as well as the Scribe and an Interpreter to translate for the witnesses who would not be able to speak in Italian, but spoke some other language or Mediterranean dialect. The Inquisitor would first begin by asking the individuals why they were brought in, and then move on to various specific questions. In larger, more complicated cases, the accused would have to defend himself. Sometimes he would not even know who accused him, and could not rely on any lawyers in this court. Torture would only have been used on particular individuals who would not admit 
to their sins, and all the evidence was against them. Each case brings us in contact with the individuals and their sufferings. Some who would have fallen into superstition in order to help themselves in their situation. One particular case we could look at is that of Giorgio and Eleonora Muscta from Orme. Giorgio went to the Inquisitor to accuse himself of a sin where he relied and asked the help of a slave to perform magical remedies in order for him to save the health of his daughter. In front of the Inquisitor, Giorgio describes Circa un mese fa, o poco più in avanti, prima che partissero le galere da questo porto, avendo io visto nel nostro casale curvo un schiavo moro infedele chiamato Musa, che è schiavo nelle galere, ma non so quale. Io chiamai a casa mia perché lui sapeva guarire molte sorte di infermità. Mia figlia è un po' leggia de cervello, e me mi sento molto male dagli occhi. Detto schiavo mi disse che abbiamo in casa nostra una magaria. Eleonora, his wife, also accuses herself of being complicit in this sin of sorcery. Fra qualche giorno è tornato con detti remedi lo schiavo e con una scotella tutta scritta di dentro. Ci ordinò che in detto vaso ci mettessimo dell'acqua e dar da bere detta acqua a nostra figlia. In this case, we can see that the details given do not just describe what the sin was. However, it also sheds light on various aspects of Maltese society. For example, slaves that would have been in constant contact with the inhabitants of Malta. Also, suggesting to them various magic spells and remedies where prayer and medicine would not have been helpful. It also tells us that slaves would have been moving freely around the island on certain days. It also shows how these individuals have decided to put the Inquisitor into the situation, giving particular importance to the fact that this particular incident happened a couple of days before the galleys of the Order set sail. It also explains to us how certain movement in the port would have been of particular interest and spectacle that would have been stamped in the minds of the individuals and thus individuals would have made reference to such events to put people in context. There are various ways of looking at the documentation of individual judicial cases from the Inquisition Archive. But one must look at these cases with an eye for detail that express the human condition and experience that above all help us understand our heritage and how we came to be.